What's up guys? Uh, you can see I got a new toy out here in the barn. It's a Atlas 9,000 pound two post car lift. I figured it would be really nice to have for this project. Um, so I went ahead and pulled the trigger on it. In this video, I'm gonna be tearing apart the whole front of the Supra, the bumpers, headlights, quarter panels, possibly the engine is gonna come out in this video to get this engine bay ready for paint. All right, I'll start on this headlight here. Pretty easy to get out in the Supra. Um, at least in this one, there's two 10 millimeter nuts back on this side and a 10 millimeter bolt right here holding it. This headlight somehow got hit and the bracket is cracked on it and just kind of lays in here. I am going to put on the newer style 97 through 98 headlights. I'm also putting on the newer bumper, which I already have. I still need to pick up the headlights. Um, headlights are about a thousand dollars for the Supra which is, I guess, the reason I haven't bought them yet. And there are rumors that Toyota, I guess it's not a rumor, I think they actually confirmed it, that Toyota is going to be making headlights again. Um, the price is so high because they're discontinued, and they're kind of hard to get your hands on. So I've been trying to wait and see if that price goes down once Toyota starts making them. Just have to wait and see if that lines up with my, uh, my timeline on this car. Okay, now the bumper's ready to come off. That passenger side headlight wanted to fight me every step of the way. And I had to come out to get the bumper. I think everything should just about be free here. I'm ready to get it off the car. Oh. Bumper is off. It's a little bit uh, harder than it probably should have been. Not too worried about the condition on this bumper. I have a brand new 98 bumper to go on there. This is probably going in the trash. Um, it's in quite rough shape. I don't know if somebody could fix it up, maybe. Other reason is it's missing the, the part that holds the fender liner over there. And it doesn't quite fit the car 100%. When I bought the car, I noticed that this headlight was busted and didn't sit in there right. So I did take it apart and replace this bracket because it was bent down here. That didn't seem to fix the problem. So I took it to a body shop. They measured the car, all the unibody points, set it straight, and I think it may, might be this bumper. So I guess we'll find out. I really hope that it's just the bumper so everything looks right up here. Okay, the next thing I'm gonna do is get this air intake out of here. So I won't be needing that on the swap that's going on here. It's always amazing whenever you take off the stock air intake on the 2JZ, just how much space in the engine bay there is. Um, the IS300, similar setup with the intake vehicle that goes over the top. All right, I got that out of there. I think the next thing to do is race the car up and probably start getting the radiator out. So. Oh. All right, I got it up in the air. Let's do a quick tour underneath this car. It is fairly clean for being 27 years old. There's the usual surface stress that is to be expected. Um, the frame rail over here has definitely been in contact with the ground. I am probably gonna undercoat all of this. Probably do it myself with like Raptor liner. I think it would look really, really nice. Probably keeping the stock in a diff for now. Yeah, I do wanna get this all cleaned up. Get it looking fairly nice underneath here. The exhaust is ripped off or rusted off. 
Not really sure. It's kind of a mystery seeing how this isn't that rusted, but back here it looks horrible. I have an HKS high power that will be going on the car. So yeah, let's get the uh, coolant drained. I always love draining coolant on a car because it seems like no matter what you do, you end up making a huge mess. Maybe that's just me. I must say, this is the first time I will have changed it on a lift. Oh, actually, this radiator has a, a drain hole there. Every other one I've ever worked with did not have that. So never mind. That was pretty easy. Gonna take a while to drain. Yeah, my other cars have had petcocks on them like that, but they just drain onto a cross member or something and it's always a huge mess. All right, uh, most of the coolant is out. So now I'll pull the lower radiator hose and I'm probably gonna take a shower right here, I bet. It's always residual. Maybe I'll get lucky. Yeah, it feels, feels pretty empty. Wow, for how old this thing is, that hose is extremely soft, so just kind of shocked by that. I don't really know the procedure for pulling a radiator in a car with this mechanical fan because it has this big shroud on it. So what I think I will do is unbolt the shroud down here so I can pull the radiator separate from it. Because obviously the radiator is not going to come out because the, the fan's going to interfere. All right, I got the radiator and shroud out of there. The coolant that came out of the motor looks pretty clean like somebody may have recently changed it but the radiator hoses and this hard uh, pipe go into the head tell a different story on uh, the coolant change interval on this car so a fun story about this odyssey battery in here when i bought the car it had a battery in it wouldn't hold a charge it also was missing the battery tie down i only had to drive this car like 10 miles home. So I drove it home, put the battery from my Lexus in it, which was a fairly new, nice interstate battery. And again, no battery tie down. Of course, I was excited, you know, to have the car. So just driving it a little bit. Well, the battery fell into the power steering pulley and destroyed the battery and got battery acid everywhere. So I actually painted the frame rail up here and underneath here, just with a, a black paint for now. Um, yeah, would not recommend that. It was not a fun problem to deal with that I created myself. This battery will be going in the trunk, so not a big deal that it doesn't quite fit right since it's not going to be living up here. You can see I had to put some 2x4s in there to get the battery uh, tied down to hold correctly. And the battery tray was completely destroyed by the battery acid. So, like I said, all that's going away. Not a big deal. All right, guys, that's going to be it for this video. In the next one, I'll be pulling this 2JZ engine and further stripping down the engine bay to get it ready for paint. I plan on uploading about once or twice a week for this series. So if you like what you see so far, please don't forget to subscribe and like the video. Thanks.